Okay, this is a tutorial on how to create a room set uh, for our Barcelona chair. This is a photo I just got off, off Google Images um, and it's going to be my inspiration. So I'm not going to do it exactly like this, but I'll use this as a reference for what I want to create. So it's going to be a floor, a back wall, a ceiling. You can't see the ceiling here, but I do want one. A nice funky lamp, a pot plant, a coffee table, and we'll just import our Barcelona chair towards the end. Okay, so let's get started. Obviously with the room, you would start with a box. So I'm gonna draw out a box and I'll set the length to six meters. So that's 600 centimeters. The width to 10 meters, that's 1000 centimeters and the height to 250 centimeters. And then drop the tool. Let's call it room and set the color to our gray color. Now, let me just center the object on the scene. So you'll notice that whenever I create an object, I um, reassign the color to gray. Um, and this is a bit tedious, um, but I've just got used to doing it. But if you just want the, every new object to be one color, what you need to do is when you assign your color, you need to uncheck this assign random colors. So just uncheck that and then from that point on all your objects will be one color and that's your current color. So I should have probably done that quite a while ago instead of constantly changing the color but just force of habit. Um, okay so we've got our room. Um, one other thing that I keep forgetting to do and it's a very bad habit is not setting up a new project path. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my desktop here and I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it um, Barcelona Chair Room Set. Okay, and then back in Max, I'm going to go to File, Set Project Folder, and I'll go and find that folder here. Okay. And it's probably a good idea to save at this stage as well. And it takes me to my scene folder and I'll just call it room set v1 version 1. Okay so from here on my modify tab I'm going to apply an edit poly modifier. I'm going to go into polygon view and I'm going to remove three walls. Remember when you're modeling something like a room set only model what your camera is going to see um, that's a good uh, thing to remember. It's kind of like producing a movie. In movies, the sets are only what you actually see on camera. So now we need to select these three leftover sides and we need to flip them so that they're facing inwards. Okay, flip. And, oh, I think I missed the bottom one. Let's, let me do that one on its own. Okay, so all polys are facing inwards now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to create a skirting at the bottom here. So I'm going to go to edge mode, select this edge, and I'm going to create a shape on make sure it's linear, and I'm just going to call it skirting. And I'll go and select that skirting object, and I'm going to apply a sweep modifier. And I'll choose... Um, Let's go with channel. Uh, actually, no, channels. Angle will be a good one. Okay, and then let's go make some changes here. So I need it to be um, flipped. Okay, and then uh, let's just get the size down a bit. Let's make it the thickness, 0, 0,2. The length, uh, let's set it to 10 centimeters and the width to two centimeters. Uh, yeah, that's about right. And then our offset value on the X, a little bit out, and on the Y, a little bit up. Okay, so now we've got that going on. Let me just put F4 on so I can see the segment. Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat that for the top to make a cornice. So edge, select that edge, 
create shape, let's just call it corners. I'll go and select that shape and the same again, sweep and we'll choose angle, let me go in here and see what I've got. Okay, we need to oh, close that up by mistake. Okay, and then that's what I want. Okay, let's make the um, thickness, not comma two. Okay, and this one will make a little bit taller, and we'll set it to five centimeters width and then for offset we'll move it down and out a little bit okay so we've got corners at the top and a um, skirting at the bottom so back to the room I need to select this edge and then under selection I'm going to ring it so I've got the other edge as well and I'm going to go to connect settings so I need to set the top and the bottom for my windows so I'll set two segments and I'll just spread them out a bit so the windows go quite high and quite low maybe not that low and then I'm just going to shift the whole lot up a bit to about there okay and with those two selected I'm going to create a shape again and I'm just going to call this uh, rails and for rails once again a sweep modifier and this time I'm going to choose a channel let's go and have a look here okay uh, okay because they for some reason they are on either side which is not what I want so I'm going to actually rather choose tube and then I'll set the thickness to 0, 0,2 the length to fairly narrow and the width a little bit narrower and then let's just see our offset values Right, so we've got that. In fact, that looks wrong. Let's go back down to just close up these roll-ups. Uh, let's just reset all the offsets. That's better. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave it at zero and zero. Okay, so we've got our rails, kind of picture rails type things. Now we need to go back to the room and we need to create geometry for the actual windows. I'm only going to do two windows. So under edges, I'm going to select, um, I'll just go into my select object. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, okay, I need to actually hide everything else so I can see what I'm doing so hide unselected that's better okay so I've got that edge selected and actually I only need that one and that one and then I'm going to go to connect settings and let's set up our windows so we need four and we're going to bring them in closer Okay, and okay, that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is bring them in even more close. So I'm going to take just these two and move them in, and then just these two and move them in. Okay, so that's where our windows are going to go. Now I need to do the roof, so I'm going to select Polygon and I'm going to go to Bevel Settings 
and zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to change the outline value so that it outlines in and then I'm going to press the plus button, zero my outline and change my height value so that it goes up a little bit. That's a bit too much. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to go to my edge sub-object and select that edge and that edge and I'm going to connect them and we'll set them to one, two, let's set it to four. So one, two, three, four segments. Okay. And it looks like, oh no, that's just the lighting. I thought maybe these polys were facing the wrong way. Okay, and then I'm going to leave those selected and add to that selection here. So I'll take that edge. And that edge. And do a connect the other way, but let's just do two this time. And okay. Alright, so we've got some extra geometry there. Then I'm going to go to Polygon. And I've just got those inside ones selected. I'm going to go back to Bevel Settings and zero that out and I'm going to change the outline value again but this time I'm going to change it to by polygon so we get that sort of result I'm going to press plus and zero out the outline and change the height up a little bit so it just gives us detail as though there's some beams in the roof and we'll set material IDs to those eventually. Um, so that's basically the room. If I just unhide everything, and I just set my shading to um, flat color so we can see everything, you can see that I've got my ceiling and I've got my places for the walls. Um, so I'm ready to go. So I'm going to take the two polys out for the windows. Okay, and um, I think it's probably a good time to save. So I'm just going to say save, save a copy as, and just say save. And it's going to add an O2 to the version. So I'm keeping adding versions as I go. All right, so let's attempt to put the windows in. So I'm going to hide everything else. And I'm going to go to my Create tab and to Windows. And I'm just going to choose fixed. I need to put my snaps on, so right click, make sure vertex is on. And I'm going to drag across there, release. And this is a bit tough now. Um, and then up to there. Okay, so it's done something crazy there, but I can now go and adjust that. So the depth is too much, so we need to bring that depth in. And then we can go to our Move tool and just on the Y axis. Okay, remember to turn snaps off. That can be very frustrating. Okay, let's just go and put this window in. All right, and then in our parameters for the window, I'm going to go to panels and we're going to put in one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Okay, and then I'm going to hold down shift, make a copy next door. And I'll make it an instance so that if I make any changes to the original one, I don't have to do it twice. Okay, so I've got the basics of my room. Now um, I need to oops, unhide all. Um, now I need to move on to creating some furniture. Okay, so the um, there was a kind of uh, interesting lampshade. So I'm going to go to my Create tab and back to Standard Primitives, and let's just make a cylinder. Okay, this will be the base 
of that lamp. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's change some parameters. So let's round it up to 30 centimeters. Uh, we'll set the height to five. Height segments to one. And side segments, let's make it 30 so it's nice and rounded. Okay, I think I'm going to make the height one centimeter. Okay, and then right click to make it. And then I'm going to add an edit poly modifier. Select the top poly. And go to bevel settings. And let's push it up a little bit and outline it in a little bit. Press plus. And let's do that again. And then plus. And bring that in again. Maybe push it up a tiny bit. Okay. So that's our base. I'll call it lamp base. Okay, and now we need to create the lamp part. So I'll just do it on the side over here and create a sphere. And I'm going to go to hemisphere and just change that so that it's kind of like that. Right click and add an edit poly modifier go into polygon mode <clears throat> and we'll just select I'm going to select one hold down uh, shift oh sorry control no. doesn't want doesn't want to run around my selection so I'm just going to keep holding control and go the way around, uh, yeah, loop is not available, so just got to do this by hand. Okay, I'm going to delete those, and then I'm going to apply the shell modifier. And it's a bit thick, so let's just make it uh, 0.2 centimeters thick. Okay, so that's the kind of shaded part. Um, just looking at it again, it looks a bit huge. So let's go back down to the sphere. Let's just bring that radius in a bit. That's better. And then back up to shell. All right, so now we need to create the kind of... Uh, the support that goes round. So I'm going to switch to my front viewport and there's my base there. So I'm going to use shape, line and I'm going to start at the bottom here and click and drag up and then bring it around Okay, let's just right click to drop the tool. Let's go into vertex mode. I need to make some changes here. So I'm going to take that end point off. And then this one I can move a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to put on interpolation adaptive. And then I'm going to go to rendering and enable in renderer, enable in viewport, and let's just make the stem, let's make it 1,5 centimeters. Okay. And still need, still need this to be a little bit more kind of down pointing, and then this can come up a bit. All right, that's better. Okay. So now I need to take my lampshade, it's this guy here, and I need to connect it on here. I might still need to bring it down a bit, it still looks a bit huge. Whoops, what happened? OK, 
Okay, it's still a bit big. Yep, that's better. Okay, so we'll connect it there. And we'll just rotate it a bit. Okay, now I need to check in another viewport to make sure everything lines up. So, left viewport. So we need our stem to be on our base and we need our lamp to be centered on our stem. So now we can select all three of these and group them together and just call it lamp. Okay, and then I can actually rotate it a little bit and position it. So I'm going to move it a little bit to the back. And then just rotate it a bit. Okay, so there's our funky lamp. Okay, the next thing we need to create is a pot plant. So let's move on to that next. Okay, I better save. So save, copy again. And to make the pot plant, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we'll take a um, cylinder again, draw out a small base, just bring it up. Um, okay, and I'm going to make it shorter right click to drop the tool and apply the edit poly modifier and I'm going to go to polygon mode select the top poly and then bevel settings so we're going to bevel it up and out of it and press plus and zero those values and let's go out a little bit and plus zero the outline change the height okay and then plus zero the height bring it in a little bit plus again zero the outline and take the height down okay so you can do a pot in whatever design this is a very basic kind of uh, pot shape let's just see the overall size i think that works Okay, now to put a plant in here, um, I'm going to go back to create, and I'm going to go down to, uh, where is it, um, AEC extended, and then foliage, and let's just go and find something that will work as a pot plant. Uh, let's try this big yucca. Okay, and it is big. So let's bring it down significantly. Okay, and we'll position it inside the pot. Okay, you'll notice that when I click away, the detail is lost. And that's just a method that's used in Max to save processing time. So in my case, because this isn't such a complex scene, I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go here and it says viewport canopy mode. When not selected, I'm going to say never. So now when I click away, I actually get my pot plant. So I'm going to select the plant and the pot, group them together and just call it pot plant. And we can move that to the back up against the wall. Not going through the wall though. Okay, that's fine. Okay, the next thing I want to do is make a, a rug or a carpet. So that's just literally going to be a basic box. So a box. And we'll drag that out. And then let's just go back in here and make sure that it's a nice... Um, standard size. So I'll make it 400 centimeters wide. Uh, let's make it square, 400 width and height. I'm going to say 0, 0,3. Okay, 
So it's just above ground level. Um, I need to check that in one of my orthographic viewports. So let's go and have a look in our left viewport and let's see. Okay, so it needs to be a bit above the ground. Okay, and maybe a little bit away from the lamp. Okay, that's good. All right, so we've got our carpet. Um, I want some artwork on the walls, so I'm going to go back to box, and this time I'm going to put auto grid on, which means I can draw on an existing object. I'm going to drag out a big painting here, and I'm going to put uh, oh, auto grid. I'll put it off next time I use it, but let's go back in here and let's just change some settings here. So let's make this a um, one. So two meters, maybe not, let's, it's a bit high, let's make it uh, 1,5, or that'll be 150 by 150, and let's make it uh, three centimeters deep. Okay, um, too big. So let me just eyeball it down a bit. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, apply an edit poly modifier. Take the front poly and bevel settings. Let's outline it in a bit. Plus and take frame down a bit and bring the outline smaller and then plus and let's just zero those out and let's take that height in a tiny bit more now what's happened is it's actually gone through the back of this object so I'm just going to move it out whoops I need to move the whole object out and then I'm going to go to polygon mode and I'm just going to select the back poly and delete it. Okay, so now we've got, and this one I can actually, this poly I can actually move up a little bit. Okay, so we've got our picture, which we can now place up against the wall. Let's just make sure it's not going through the wall. So I need to check that out in an orthographic view. Let's just make sure it's selected. Okay, and let's put it there. Okay, and I'm going to make a copy of that to the other side. Not as an instance, because I want different pictures in each frame. Okay, so we've got our picture frames, our windows, our plant, our lamp, our rug, but now we need a um, coffee table, and this is gonna be a really simple design. So again, a box. Um, I'll put auto grid off, because the grid is automatically on the ground there. And let's just make the top first. And I'll move that up a bit. And I think we're going to make this a glass table. So we'll change the height. Let's make the height one centimeter. The length, 100. The width, 80. No, I'm going to make the width 100 and the height, sorry, the length 80. That's better. Okay. 
looks a bit small actually. Let's make it 150 better. All right, so we need to create some uh, legs for this. So um, keeping it really simple, I'm just going to use the cylinder. And this is literally just going to be uh, kind of chrome, cylindrical chrome legs. So let's make one. And let's just check the settings. So we'll set the height. It's going to go through the glass and be attached at the top. The radius, um, let's just make it two centimeters. Okay, and we'll position that. It uh, probably doesn't need 30 sides. Let's set it to 15 sides. And then we'll move it into position about there. Okay. And then shift, drag a copy, and make it an instance. Select both of these and shift, drag a copy there as an instance. And then with the top, we're going to shift, drag down and make an instance as well. Okay, so there's our little modern coffee table. So we're going to select all these parts. And group it and call it coffee table. Okay, so I need to just clean up a little bit here. So I've got um, some stuff to fix. So the box is going to be called carpet. That is painting one. That is painting two okay window window lamp pot plant rails room skirting so skirting whoops went somewhere else there skirting room rails corners should be grouped as a room Okay, so we've got carpet, coffee table, two windows, lamp, painting one, painting two, pot plant, room. Okay, it's a good time to save. All right, and now what we can do is we can place our Barcelona um, chairs or chair. So um, I'm going to I could place it as, or import it as an external ref, an X ref, but that becomes a little bit complicated if you haven't already applied material. So I'm actually going to just merge it into the scene. So I'm going to go File, Import, Merge, and I'm going to go and find wherever you've saved your Barcelona chair. Um, I should probably put mine in the right place. Uh, that would be a good idea. So let me just go and find it. Uh, Okay, there it is there. I'm just going to copy that and then go to my desktop and into my um, scene assets and I'll just paste it in there. Okay, so now I can go in here. Scene assets, there's my Barcelona chair. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to bring in geometry, shapes, no lights, no camera, no helpers, no space warps. Groups are fine, no bone objects. Okay, so just the object and bring it in. Okay, so there it is. So now we can actually position it in our top viewport. So you go full screen there and let's just um, move it around the coffee table. So I'm going to put one over there 
and then shift drag a copy there and I'll make it an instance and then shift drag a copy here and we'll rotate that angle snaps on I just want to rotate it 90 degrees angle snap off and then whoops let's hold down shift first and then make a copy this side and let's angle snap rotate and rotate it 180 degrees the other way okay and just position it a little bit more carefully let's see what that looks like okay pretty decent so we've got everything we need for our room let's just save a new version and we can now move on to uh, the next learning unit now you don't have to do exactly the same as what I've done here. This is just a guideline for you to follow. If you want to make your room a little bit differently, if you think my interior decorating sucks, you can do your own thing. But this gives you a kind of idea of what you are expected to do for this activity. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.